It's Saturday. It's nine o'clock. It's time for the Monster Magic Saturday Show. Let's do this. Wake up, it's a beautiful morning. Come on, the sun's shining for your eyes. Yeah, hey, and welcome to another Monster Magic Saturday Show. I've got lots of stuff to go through once again. Some stuff I'm not sure about, some stuff I like, some stuff. Yeah, not too keen. So let's get on with it. First up, we've got Fox's handcuffs. Fox's handcuffs. Yes, here we are. Uh, Wayne Fox has been releasing quite a lot recently. I did his uh, light heavy pen in a review show not so long ago. There we go. Feel free to check out that review show. It's a corker. It really is. So well, why not go and remind yourself of what I looked like a couple of weeks ago? Um, so this is Fox's handcuffs, and obviously, I think we probably all know it's going to be based around Crazy Man's handcuffs, a trick that was very much popularised by Michael Amar uh, back in the eighties. Um, I guess it was in his book, The Magic of Michael Amar, and it's since been taught on his Renditions DVD. Wayne doesn't teach Crazy Man's handcuffs in this uh, project, so you will need. To check out how to do that um it is in various publications but as wayne points out check out michael amar and how he teaches it because he was one of the best at it and full of all of the tips and, and so on since then the, the routine has developed so if you don't know crazy man's handcuffs let me just quickly recap you have two elastic bands uh they go between each other and you can pull them apart and they they penetrate through each other the often Big premise is that you talk about um, David Copperfield walking through the Great Wall of China. Well, this is a budget version. That's the sort of pattern that goes with it. It does have extra phases over the years. People have put in, th you know, the band being on someone's shoulder and all manner of bands disappearing, all of these great things. It's been really, really developed. And all of those routines just use normal elastic bands by and large. Wayne has created a gimmick that helps you do the routine makes it cleaner possibly um or makes it slightly more powerful i'm not sure quite what the aim is actually now i'm talking about it because crazy man's handcuffs is is very visual and very fooling i think this you can do it slower you don't necessarily have to do it at the stretch i you know i'm not sure what the advantages of this gimmick crazy man's handcuffs does get great reactions as is it's easy to do doesn't require a gimmick this gimmick i think if you're doing social media as wayne points out in his um tutorial you will get better angles or you better do it slower or you're going to create more visual penetrations for sure Probably fooling. I guess you get the relink. The relink is probably the you get a very easy relink with this gimmick, which is very nice. But it's still Crazy Man's handcuffs. Crazy Man's handcuffs is just great as it is. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This is this is one of those ones I'm on the fence about. The gimmick is made to match um, a red Rhineflesh band, so. That'll blend in. You get some bands in there with, with the gimmick as well. So you'll always have a matching band. You're good to go straight out of the box. The teaching is great. It's all explained very clearly. Well, he's a very engaging teacher as well. So, you know, you don't get tired or bored. And he's often adding little tips of psychology to help you improve your magic in general. I'm just not sure Crazy Man's Handcuffs needs this gimmick. But having said that, if you can ring it in, and make the penetration and the relink slower and more powerful and then ring it out again. Maybe it is. It's just, for me, it's an extra thing to carry around when I'm working. I'd rather just have two elastic bands on my wrist. Um, not much more I can say about it. It is a very simple gimmick. It's $28.99. The tutorial is good and will show you everything you need to know and give you some ideas. I just feel that Crazy Man's Handcuffs it's a blinding trick already uh, and and a clean one and you can just hand everything out straight away. I'm not sure I really want to start ringing gimmicks in and ditching gimmicks. So 
there you go. It's um, it's a great idea, I guess. I'm just not sure it's needed. And now for something else I'm not sure about. It's Tetra Cube by uh, what's it by Maxim Ducher, isn't it? Um, and Magic Dream. This uh, was a big sensation on social media when I think Maxim first revealed what this cube does. And what it does is absolutely blind and amazing. It is um, it's a lovely packaging, very nice packaging. Let me show you what you get. So very nice packaging, you get the instructions thing, which you don't need to see, and you get the cube um, as is. Uh, you get it black and all blank. So this is basically a self-solving Rubik's cube. You can solve it by just tossing it up in the air, by a little gravity switch, by just the slightest movement, and the whole cube will solve itself from being mixed. When Maxim did this on social media, uh, everyone was commenting, commenting about it, sometimes not too favourably about Maxim, I have to say, but it is um, great. It is a brilliant idea. It's absolutely ingenious. It is completely unique in its way of thinking and it is a fantastic piece of engineering and very smart and um this so this one's this is how you get it you get it black and you get the stickers and a lot of the tutorial is basically uh teaching you how to put the stickers on so you have also have some little additional things you can put on it so you can sticker this in three different ways depending on how you want it to work so you can have it so that, that sometimes you might just, well, I don't want to say too much, but uh, yeah, so you can sticker it in three different ways. And each way they get solved. In some ways have an advantage over others, um, but you can generally, generally speaking, no matter how you do it, you can show, show this, this would be a completely mixed up cube, and then you toss it up in the air and it become completely solved. Um, so the things to be aware of really is that you can't turn it. You can't um, actually mix it up physically as you would do a normal cube. So it will be stickered mixed and then a toss up and it will become solved instantly. I don't want, I kind of want to show you the action and how it works, but I think that might be a bit naughty. I think I might get in trouble if I show you exactly how it works, but it is smart. Um, you get, so obviously you get all of the stickers, you get some extra bits, you get some stickers in the box. It is a wonderful, wonderful, object uh, it's fun it's a curious thing it's great to play with it's great to fiddle with it's almost addictive uh, to, to sort of hold and throw it up in the air and solve it and unsolve it and everything else it, it's like a tactile bundle of joy i'm not sure it, it is particularly good um for for for, for magic um it's it's for social media i reckon you'll storm it because you you know and and everything else i think i'm more fascinated with how it works and watching it work than than making a trick out of it almost the solution is better than the effect with this so for me it feels very much like a toy something i want to play with I'm not sure I can think of how to really use it in a show. I guess you just have to toss it up and do the toss up solve. He does talk about doing a Michael Murray solution with it and all of that. So one thing you could easily do with it is if you don't want to learn any of those quick solve algorithms, this will do them all for you. You will obviously have to switch, a cube, you know, if you've handed that cube to get mixed up, you're going to have to switch that at some point. I just, <sighs> really really want to love it it's it's a fantastic idea it's really out of the box smart genius stuff but is it is it a magic trick or, or or is it a fun toy to play with i mean it'll solve you can roll it across the table to solve it brilliant absolutely brilliant but uh, maybe maybe it's got stiff competition from things like the Venom Cube, which Venom Cube, uh, I know I used to work with Jason Noble. He does Venom Cube a lot and he loves it. And it is probably the best, come, 
best Rubik's Cube thing out there for me is the Venom Cube. If you're going to solve it, it is terrific. This is very, very clever. This is genius. But does it, can it provide the magic moments that Venom Cube can? And I'm not sure. It's a thing of sheer beauty. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's really well made. It's a hell of a lot of fun. It is um, it's 140 pounds, more or less. It's a brilliant self-solving cube. Absolute genius. Um, I love it. I'm just not sure I'd use it. Chrono Force by Sammy Ali and uh, the guys at Murphy's. Um, I think Sammy Ali's not on the tutorial. It's all done by Javier. And this is basically, I want to say it's an app, but I don't know if it's an app or a widget or something. You download it onto your phone and then you're good to go. You don't need the internet to actually perform this trick, which um, makes it really, really appeal to me. It just sits on your phone. And what it is, is a fake timer that can force numbers. Uh, you can force one number, it can force a multitude of numbers. And we as magicians absolutely love, not even love it, we need to be able to make people choose, force people <laughs> into a number, don't we? That's what we need. We need to have, feel that they've got a free choice, but we can narrow it down. And here you've got, you can do, you can produce more than one number, you can do six numbers. So this is so versatile, it is incredible. It is so easy to do. The tutorial is online, which um, is a bit of a shame because for me, I would like a booklet. So that was why I got the physical copy and I wanted a bit more of instructions. Unfortunately, that's not what happens. Basically, you've got the code and stuff in here, um, which if you do um, order it from me, I'll just, I can open it, send you the code in advance so you can get cracking and then I'll send you the physical product afterwards if you want it or I can just um, get rid of it for you. But the post is free, so it's up to you. Um, but yes, so it's very easy to set up. Javier teaches it in his online tutorial, which is very thorough, shows a few um, performances of him freaking people out as well. The uh, reason I would like a book or a physical copy is I want to be setting it up on my phone as I'm watching it. So I had to watch it on a computer and then run through all the settings on my phone. I thought if I had a book, I wouldn't need a second uh, electronic gadget to go through. But the setup is really, really easy. It sits on your phone. You are ready to go to force any numbers. And here are some of the routines. So you've got uh, crystal crystal clean, uh, any card at any number. Obviously, you might need a few card basic card skills to do a card at any number. But at least you'll know, as long as you know where that card is in the deck, you can force the right number. Lottery predictions, pin number reveals, dealing demonstrations, sort of numbers, birthday date revelations. Um, it doesn't say it, but you can do serial numbers on um, banknotes or, or anything that's got a number, basically. So it could be a telephone number, whatever. Um, you can force these numbers. And what is really nice, it just sits on your phone. It looks so innocent. And you can give your phone to the spectator and they can do all of the button pressing, all of the timing, and there's nothing to see. It is really, really fooling. It is a terrific idea and it is executed really, really well. I like it because it's on um, iOS and Android and I've got an Android phone, which if you've watched uh, my review of Vox by David Jonathan, one of the one of the best reviews you'll ever see this one. I was outstanding, really was outstanding. Uh, you can watch that because Vox is another great app to have. But this is almost foolproof. Even I can do it. Like I say, I would um, want, want the, the the interface for setting it up is pretty is pretty clear. Once you've done it a few times, you'll get the knack of it. You'll get the hang of it, and then you won't have to worry too much about the instructions. I'd love a little booklet. That's me. I'm getting on a bit. Um, but it is really, really good. It's really, really versatile. It's $35.99. You can pay $35.99 for a card at any number. You can pay $35.99. It'd be hard push to get a decent lottery prediction for $35.99. You really would. To get two, to be able to force a, the serial number on a, on a banknote for $35.99 would be great. To get all of this, to get this versatility into it, this is why it's such a good idea. Using this timer, it looks innocent. Everyone's seen it on the phone. Everyone knows what it looks like. Execution, great. So 
there you go. What more can I say? Uh, great tutorial, great idea, great premise, really versatile, really well designed. It's, it, it's, uh, it's, this is the no brainer of the week. If I'm ever going to have a no brainer of the week, this is probably the no brainer of the week. You'll, you'll come up with something to use this for. I'm going to, and you've always got it on you. That's the nice thing. So, um, at the drop of a hat, you can perform some seriously powerful magic. Chrono Stop by Sammy Alley. And now we have Eric Chen's latest release, Enzo. Yes, Enzo. Um, this. Oh my God. What fun. This is mesmerizing stuff. Uh, basically, you put a drop of ink on your back of your business card and it will make a circle and it'll draw it just just like that it is really 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 cool <laughs> uh, fascinating to watch fascinating to do you are limited to a circle or an o or a zero as it were so really you're gonna be forcing most likely and this is how eric chen uh, uh performs it is you show some esp symbols you force obviously the o and then you put the drop of ink on the card and it reveals uh, their um their, their circle um it's amazing to watch it really is and what you get um if i can show you is uh, i probably can't show you can i basically what's in the box is a fake stack of business cards not 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 very thick very thin actually um some ideal of the paper stock some so blank paper, uh, cards, business card size, you get, you have to provide your own ink, but any ink will do. He suggests some washable off ink. Um, and also you get, so you, and you, you get uh, the, the, the controller and you are good to go. The reset is a few seconds. It's on a little delay. He teaches it really well. And if you look at the electronics, they're nicely laid out. They're clean. It is super duper well made. This is going to be a reliable, long lasting product for sure. Um, it is something of real quality. And if you could just use, if you get your own business cards printed on the right material or even just stick what he provides on the back of your business card, um, it is visually, visually, it is a mind bending <laughs> thing to watch and as a revelation is incredibly strong how you can pretend to you can pretend to blow it as well so you sort of and it'll blow round and he deals with with how how much ink to put on how to make sure you get a whole uh, circle drawn the tutorial so tutorial's great i haven't done it live on anyone who's not a magician who hasn't seen the trailer or anything like that and i think that is going to be the real test because i think people will freak out when they see that ink draw itself so you are limited to just the circle or the o the power of this is you need a clean force of the the symbol the circle symbol from esp and then you've got such a strong revelation of that oh problem is it's only a one in with with the sp is only a one in five you're probably better off doing it with the alphabet and having a one in 26 you've got alphabet cards and one in 26 and then do it that might be more impressive but the way that circle draws is going to freak people out you can pretend to blow it if you want i don't know why i mimed blowing you know what blowing is he does talk about a different type of paper you require but he shows the different type of paper and he sort of vaguely describes the different types of paper and which one's best, but he doesn't give you the exact make and weight and style of paper. So that might take a bit of experimentation. I would take the cards he's got to a stationer's and go, look, what paper's this? And just get a bank of it. You can get your business, I'm sure you can get your business cards printed on something fairly similar. And those business cards would be a nice giveaway because you can hand out this afterwards so that is what is really really nice imagine you put a drop of ink on your business card the business card draws the letter or the symbol they were thinking of and then you hand it to them on the on the back so it is an incredible trick 
this could be a reputation making effect. It's certainly going to be something people remember and talk about for a long time. This ticks a lot of boxes for me. I don't do a lot of shows. I'm not too bothered about it being bothered than the limited number of revelations. Well, the one revelation that you've got. To me, it looks like real magic. It'll freak people out. People will definitely be talking about it. And it's also, from my point of view, just fun. Uh, and that is really, really what, what I'm all about. I will enjoy performing this. And I think that's what you've probably got to decide. If you're going to spend £120 on this, will you enjoy performing it? I will. I'm going to do it. It is Enzo by Eric Chen. And now we've got the pre-sale thing that has been flying out. And, um, oh, my word, it is big. The big thing of the show. It's Cardvertisement by Michelle Hulot, Luca Volpe, and Alan Wong. I am struggling to like this. Um, the premise is lovely the premise is, is is a very good one and it's not a particularly unique one the idea is that you have a card a prediction card on display at the start of your show and you then bring out um, some of these big picture cards and you're going to choose a spectator and you're going to influence them down so you can have a big red circle and a black square and they'll choose one of those then you can have the hearts or the clubs the heart will be bigger than the diamond and so on all the way down until you've influenced them into one card. Now, all of those decisions up until this point are completely free. They can literally choose any card. And that is what is really nice about it. So you're not forcing them. You're just, the, the cards are really there for this sort of influencing idea. It's also there for the method, but, you know, to, to, for this influencing premise and, and for a bit of fun, for a bit of banter, for, for, for a, a nice journey into them choosing the actual card that you've had on display the entire time. The problem is it is just riddled, riddled with faults. The, 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 like I say, that routine is really nice. That's a great idea for a routine. This execution of it is just, just ah, you know, so there's no, if you watch the tutorial, uh, there's no real live performance of it. There's a full performance of it, but it's not a live one. It's not. He's not doing that in a paid show. And then there is him performing it uh, to some friends on uh, via Zoom. And I think that is the most he's done with it. Some parts of this is completely impractical. The method is very similar to uh, Cue the Magic which by Angelo Carbone, which came out a long time ago. Michelle says he didn't know about that until after he'd made this. Um, and cue the magic is dynamite. Sometimes you've got to get the right spectator, perhaps, but it is compact. It's easy to do. It's self-contained. It is terrific. All of those things are what Michelle was saying he was trying to do with this, and he's missed them. Um, <coughs> There's just a lot that I can't get on with with this. So um, let me show you. I can show you the boards because they they were um, visible here. So you have these. This is fine. Um, you've got uh, that on the back as well. So if you want to force, um, force it by the rabbit or the duck illusion, but that's the red or the white one. You then have the hearts and the diamonds um, or the clubs and the spades. The thing about this, this is meant to be a stage trick he mentions it for stage but that is titchy titchy tiny um which perhaps isn't too bad because the heart's quite big they'll know they'll assume that that's a diamond in the same way with the big spade they'll assume that that's a club but they can't see it but then it comes down to these numbers and really even the font i'm 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 struggling here hang on where's this. 
Yep. So these are the odd numbers. Yep. So, and and the, the graphics. I don't know. Do you know what? Why is that in the? This doesn't have to be in the middle. These could be bigger, more stand out. Um, you know, if this is on stage, they're not. They. It's all just a. It's a blur to me, really. Um, and the size of them. Why are they this size? They could just be square. I. Ah. Uh, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, so things like that, this just doesn't work for me. Plus, you've got all of these boards, right? So you have a lot of boards in, in Q the Magic, for example, but they're on your lap and you hold them all at the same time and you move forward. These boards have all got to be perched, labelled and perched on the back of a chair. That's how he does it. They're all, you know, in this sort of fashion for for supposed easy access but you need a quite a big chair you need there's nothing you know they've got all of this make this into something put if this had slots in it to put these in in a proper way so you could just have that you could open this up have these in here all slotted out and then you could just grab them out that would make more sense or if it came with a case to hold them instead of a case to hold them or anything practical you've got this bag to carry them in um which is lovely you know but but really you've got to keep going back to this chair and picking up a new board and then picking up another board and then picking up another board it's much better to be able to just do it dropping them down like that you can't do it because of how this method works and you're going to knock something i don't know i just didn't like that bit at all in fact it grated with me i wanted to scream and scratch and you know it's just not great really um the actual tutorial of how to do the trick is pretty short you've got a um i think the overall video is 50 minutes but a lot of that is uh, michelle and luca uh talking to each other about how great a product it is uh rather than and how it was developed rather than really adding any serious value you have alan wong on that video as well talking about how well made it all is and it is well made that's true um the props are really well made um, and it's a nice box etc so great job by alan design of the routine and, and 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 the method not so good also you have uh, to somehow make the card you've had on display the entire time the card that they have named so this only helps you with half of the actual method so although it will load you the card that they've selected they can name any one of the 52 cards you have then got to make that into the card you've had on display the entire time you do not get anything in this package for how much is this for 100 45 quid 150 quid you don't get the entire routine you don't get the method for making the card on display the card that they've freely named so you can't do this out of the box it is not all included everything you needed to perform this trick is not in here that is criminal is it not really for 145 pounds he does show you various ways of doing it in fact well he doesn't show you various ways of doing it at all that's nonsense what he does is um i'm getting angry now i don't want to get angry it's too early in the morning um, he uh, talks about the various products on the market that you will need to buy with this. So you'll probably need something like the Clarity Box by David Regal. Uh, you can use Paper Clipped by Jay Sankey, for example. Or he teaches um, a nifty little, uh, little gimmick uh, created by Bob Austin. Now, he doesn't reveal how any of the other three things work. He doesn't reveal Clarity Box. He doesn't reveal paper clips, but for some reason, he feels it's absolutely fine to show you how to make Bob Austin's switching device. He says he doesn't know uh, who invented it. And this is the problem. This is really what wound me up about this. This is such a rushed thing to market that really, you know, if you could find that out instantly, that most people know who invented that switching device it was bob austin back in nine in the back in the 50s he invented it and for some reason they feel it is fine to 
reveal how to make it. Why they don't include the props to make it or actually include it in the trick is another issue that I really don't want to be bantering on. But yeah, you know, for an extra couple of quid, I could have given you the full routine there. If they're going to teach you how to make it, they might as well throw it in. Michel does include the teaching of his hips switch, which he teaches, but you still need to buy extra stuff in order to do his hip switch, which is very nice. It's a great uh, little switch. Um, but yeah, you know, um, really, you're still going to have to buy that as an extra if you're going to do that particular switch. Or you're going to have to buy a switch or two by Mark Mason or, 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 or some device. So, and those devices are going to cost you, you know, they can cost you an extra 50 quid. So you're almost at a 200 pound mark for this just to perform this trick that is, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun premise. It's a lot to carry around. It's clumsy to perform. I've made some notes. Hang on. I think this is making me too angry this morning to really carry on anymore. Basically, it is a product that I can only think they had the premise for it. They didn't test it. They haven't streamlined it. What you've got here is some really, you've got some really well-made props that are, I'm not going to say any more about it. I'm too, I'm going to, I'm going to wind myself up too early in the morning and uh, I'm going to need a cup of coffee already after this. Um, I feel this is just rushed slash lazy. The props are worth a fair bit of money, but they've just, but they've just been a bit lazy with the amount of effort they've put in. Uh, they just haven't got it right. It is a big miss. It it just is not good for me. I I just don't know what they were thinking, and I don't, you know. Fundamentally, this is a lot of money for what you get. Not what you get physically, um, although I don't like the design of these. I guess you can print your own and stick them on. For the amount of effort that's gone into thinking about streamlining this, um, routining it, and everything else is just lacking. It is not good. It is, uh, you know, you get a lovely box, get lovely props. But it's just lacking. There's a lack of effort. There's just a, oh, dear. Oh. It's a advertisement uh, by uh, three people who should know better. Uh, it's 100, £145, but you'll need to buy something else in order to do it. So you're looking at £200. And now we've got the Koran deck uh, by Liam Montier and Big Blind Media. I say by Liam Montier, obviously he didn't invent the Koran deck. Al Koran invented the Koran deck. Liam has put together a nice half hour tutorial on how to use it. What it is, explains what it is. He runs through how to handle it, um, you know, and how to be nonchalant and, and how to convince people that the deck is completely normal. It is a gimmick deck. I can't really tell you exactly how it's gimmicked without really giving the game away, can I? Um, and um, he provides three routines with it as well. A, a name any card the spectators simply just thought of, uh, Stephen Tucker's uh, trick with it, and um, another one. What's the other one? Um, tossed out, tossed out deck, <laughs> and how to use it as a tossed out deck. It is pretty versatile. Liam's teaching is very nice, very easy to understand, um, and quite engaging. Um, it's one of these decks that I think, if you were coming up with a, perhaps if you're coming up with a bigger routine, you know, it's useful to know about this deck because that might be might provide the answer to something else. Uh, you know you, that you're working on, and uh, yeah, I really appreciate the, the things that Big Big Buy Media do, and sort of bringing these decks back into people's consciousness. So that is the Quran deck by Al Quran, uh, presented by 
uh, Liam Montier with Stephen Tucker's uh, cracking routine included. Um, yep, yeah, seventeen ninety nine. And that's it for another Saturday. But I want to say one more thing, and this is possibly the most important thing of the whole review show, is that there's going to be a special promotion tomorrow. That's a Sunday. It's going to be a 20% discount code will appear on the Monster Magic website, but only for 20 minutes. At some point through Sunday, from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., there will be a 20 minute window where this 20% discount code will be displayed. You can use it as many people who find it can use it. You can only use it once, but uh, it's not limited to any number of people. So let everybody know, tell everybody in your magic clubs, tell your friends and family, get them all clicking on because that 20 minute window at some point between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Sunday is your only chance to get the code. Uh, and then it will be uh, gone. So please, uh, good luck. Um, enjoy that little bit of fun. I hope it doesn't ruin your Sunday. I hope it adds to it. And uh, I shall see you next week.